Hi, I'm Vrinda. Whoever decided to hold the elections in this heat must have had very powerful ACs in their own office. Otherwise, anyone would have thought that having elections till June would mean asking millions to step out of their homes in peak summer. Media reports vary widely in their estimates on the death toll from the current heat wave. The numbers range from 166 to 50, but there is no doubt that this has proved to be a very lethal summer. But we should at least thank the Gamcha for allowing people to go out and vote in this heat. It is the Gamcha alone, it seems, which has given the people the endurance to face 48 degree temperatures and go out to vote and attend rallies. It's also to the credit of politicians that they have campaigned in this heat for nearly three months. Not only does such a long drawn campaign drain out the resources of opposition parties, but it is also a test of everyone's physical limits. Pura Pradesh and the Reme or may have go Bataki Jano. Yoki, yes, you know, no Garmi Mekaraya Garmi Presco Presangia, Hamekia, Janta Gokia Garmi Vajesebi Hanejane, Enkijo Ahankargi Garmi Hai, your Ahankarga Jo Bukhare is a Janta of a board so tardy. This is heat like we have never seen. This is heat that is pushing the limits of humans, animals and electronics alike. When we hear the term record breaking, we hardly get to know anything. A broken record is just that, a number that has not been crossed before. But there is no face to a term such as record breaking. We don't get to know of the ways in which such weather impacts the lives of those who live through it. There are many words which are trying to convey the intensity of this heat to you. Words like red alert, heat wave alert, rising mercury, soaring temperatures, sizzling, scorching, blistering, unforgiving, baking, sweltering. Words like this will flash on your headlines. 200 teams across the city of Delhi have been deployed to prevent people from washing cars with pipes. But are 200 teams enough? There are more than 20 lakh private cars in Delhi. Total vehicles are at nearly at 80 lakhs. Those who rely on these vehicles for their livelihood, would they not have to wash their vehicles? I don't know how many teams have been deployed to attend to people who may be getting heat strokes on the roads, but Delhi has officially seen its first death due to the heat wave. We can't say with certainty if other deaths have also been caused by the heat, but a migrant labourer from Bihar died after his body temperature shot up to 107 degrees. The government, meanwhile, is denying that temperatures in Mungeshpuri crossed 52 degrees and claims that the reading was the result of a mechanical error. But our bodies are not committing errors. There is a major difference in the statistics that are being cited in national and local media. In UP alone, local media reports tell us that 166 people have reportedly died due to the heat. In UP's Mirzapur, 13 people lost their lives due to the heat. This is the data from just one hospital. Of these, seven were home guards who had been deployed on election duty, and another 23 were admitted at the hospital and are undergoing treatment. In Bihar, at least 18 people, including eight officials on election duty, have died of heat-related ailments within a period of 48 hours. Overall, local newspapers report that nearly 60 people have died due to the heat in Bihar alone. It is indeed very hot. And not just in Delhi, but across the entire northern plains, the lower Himalayas and across countries like Iran and Pakistan. Going by El Nino trends, climate experts had been warning for a very long time that the summer of 2024 would be particularly harsh. El Nino is basically a weather condition that takes place for a variety of reasons and results in higher than usual temperatures in the Indian subcontinent. The point is that this has not happened suddenly. There was ample warning, yet we don't know what the government was doing to prepare itself and the people. This heat is lethal. It is claiming far more lives than are being accounted for and probably far more than we will ever know. 
The same script had played out last year when numerous deaths across North India were believed to have been caused by the heat but were never acknowledged as such by the government. This time too there has been a sudden spike in unexplained deaths across cities and it has coincided with the steep increase in the heat. The temperatures that people experience are produced by a combination of various factors. This may include the density of an area, the quality of ventilation and the presence of trees and shade and so on. Similarly, one's reaction to these factors can vary a lot depending on their general health, the hydrating and cooling options available to them, the jobs that they are in, facts like how long they spend in the kitchen or inside poorly ventilated workspaces and doing physically rigorous labour. Abhishek Chha and Roshan Kishore of the Hindustan Times reported in May 2022 that 49% of Indian workers are employed outdoors in scorching heat. They have no option but to work in the unbearable open heat and usually have no access to any protection. The report was based on the findings of the periodic labour force survey. Deepak Malghan, a chemical engineer and ecological economist, presented another insight on this data. Groups which are most exposed to outdoor heat stress are also those who do not have access to cooling equipment at home. This means that these are the people who never get any relief from the heat. It follows them home. Farmers, street vendors, laborers, loaders, drivers, security guards, domestic workers, rickshaw drivers, train loco pilots and many such other professionals work for hours through the heat and go back home to cramped housing areas with minimal ventilation and cooling. This report in Navdunya says that loco pilots have to drive train engines for 30 hours at a stretch in temperatures that reach up to 50 degrees Celsius. Data from the National Family Health Survey shows that only 12% of the ST population in India has access to cooling equipment at home. This number is at an abysmal 18% for SCs and 24% for OBCs. Of the remaining caste groups, only 36% have access to an AC or a cooler. What is more worrying is that in each group, there are many who do not have access to even a fan. Read this alongside this June 2023 report. As per the 2011 census, which was the last time a government cared to conduct the census, data revealed that 53% of the ACs in India are owned by just the top 5%. We don't know the status of distribution of cooling equipment as of now, but what is clear is that the impact of heat is also a story of caste and class inequality. An analysis of the deaths that are taking place will reveal this fact more concretely. But this is not all. Across northern India, hundreds of bats and birds have died due to heat wave related symptoms. Residents of Delhi, Bihar, UP and MP have reported seeing birds falling dead from the trees. Animals and birds are struggling to find shade and water. Viral Twitter clips show how a dehydrated monkey was given CPR by a policeman for 45 minutes. Be they pets or strays, dogs and cats are getting admitted at vet clinics with cases of nosebleeds, severe skin rashes and fainting. Vets report that animals are taking far too long to recover and hospital admissions have spiked. Housing societies, industrial units, hospitals and homes are also reporting far more than usual cases of fire. The Delhi Fire Department has reported that except Diwali, they have never received so many calls about fire incidents in a single day as on the 29th of May. A lot of what is happening is attributed to climate change and more specifically to the El Nino phenomenon. I am no expert and certainly there might be larger factors at play, but can the government shirk its responsibility for the current mismanagement? Right in the middle of this heat wave, the UP government has informed the National Green Tribunal that 33,000 fully grown trees will be cut for the 111 km long Kamal route. This route spans the districts of Ghaziabad, Meerut and Muzaffarnagar, all of which are badly hit by the ongoing heat wave. 33,000 trees are going to go missing. Trees that would have helped moderate the temperatures in this belt. Imagine what will be the impact of such a widespread felling of trees on the ecology of this area and how much more oppressive can a heat wave be 
when 33,000 trees are absent. Governments have been too late in waking up to the issue of illegal power connections. As a result, Delhi's monitoring teams have been empowered to cut illegal supply lines in Delhi. As the Hindu's editorial points out, this will only place those in informal settlements at greater risk of heat exposure. So the government should have prepared in advance to supply all residents with legal connections. On the contrary, these families will now be forced to face the onslaught of the heat wave without any cooling options. While numerous forests continue to burn in the Himalayas and the media and its viewers don't seem to care much for them, there are a few things you can do in this season. These videos have been sent to us from Mohali, Chandigarh. A group has set up a stall and is distributing chabil to passers-by. These scenes are common across Punjab. People come together and set up these stalls from where chabil, a cooling drink made with water, some milk and rose sweetener is given to weary travellers and really anyone who may want something to cool them down. This is part of seva a hallmark of Sikh and Punjabi culture that just shows that it is important to be attentive to the needs of those around you. This is the least we too can do in the midst of this onslaught. If you have the resources, be attentive to the needs of those who don't have access to cooling or who have to step out owing to their profession. Leave out water for animals and birds, protest the cutting of trees in your localities and ensure that your governments are held accountable for their preparation, not when the sun is at its harshest and you are fighting for your survival, but when there is still some time left. Till next time, this is Vox Vrinda.